Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to write an equation of a line um, where this time in part B, the slope of the line is given and a point on the line is also given. So let's kind of uh, uh, talk real quickly about a, the previous lesson, the part A. So remember in part A, you want to write an equation of a line where um, the slope was given and the y-intercept was given. So notice they're, uh, they're both similar in terms of the slope, so the slope's given, but um, this time in the part B, you're given a point on the line rather than just a y-intercept. So the y-intercept is a point, but in part A, it was specifically the y-intercept. And we saw that if, if the uh, slope and y-intercept is given, then you can easily use the slope-intercept form because in order to use it, you've got to know the slope and the y-intercept. We also saw that, that if the graph's given, if your graph's given, and um, you can easily s determine the y-intercept, which in this case you can easily see that the graph goes through the y-axis at this point, and in this case it was 6. You can also determine the slope where just finding another point, a nice point on the graph, and you could use rise over run. So if the line's given, and um, you can easily determine the slope using rise over run, and you can, uh, um, or any two points on the line, and you know the y-intercept, then you can easily use this formula as well. Okay, now, what's going to happen now is this. So if you look at, at this line right here, if you look at this line, the y-intercept doesn't go through an integer. So you don't want to estimate it, though, because it, it does look like it's probably negative one and a half, but but it could be negative 1 and, and uh, um, uh, let's say, 2 fifths. It could be negative 1 and 3 sevenths. It could be something like that. All right, so, so you don't want to estimate this. So what you're going to do to find the equation of a line is you're going to um, look at a point that the line goes through. So you can easily see that this line goes to this point negative 4, negative 5, and it also goes to this point here. You see this right here? It also goes through the point, let's use this one, um, 4, 2. Okay, 4, 2. And so I'm going to just go ahead and use, rather than use a slope form, I'm going to use rise over run. So in terms of the, um, in terms of the rise, I get 1, 2, I'm sorry, the run. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So my, my um, run is 8, positive 8. And I'm going up, so, be, so my rise will be positive. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And so my run is 7. So my slope is rise of a run, which is 7 eighths. Okay, so the slope is 7 eighths. And I have a point on the graph, either this one or this one I can use. Okay? But but I can't use the slope-intercept form because I don't know if this what this uh, y-intercept is exactly. Okay? I can estimate, but you don't want to estimate. You want to find the exact answer, the exact y-intercept. Okay, so what's going to happen now is that is this. Given the slope, given the slope, and given a point on the graph, which is what this lesson's about, given the slope and given a point of the graph, you want to write the equation of this line. It turns out that the equation of this line is this. It's going to be y equals, we know the slope, so the slope is 7 eighths, so, that, so you know that, that whatever you multiply in x by, it has to be the slope. But we don't know the y-intercept, but it turns out that the y-intercept is going to be negative 3 halves. That's the y-intercept. And so, and remember, negative 3 halves is negative 1 half. So it does go through um, the y axis at negative 1.5. Right, but you need to come up with this, so let's talk about how to come up with this. Alright, so there are three forms, three forms, three forms of an equation of a line. That, that you need to be familiar with. The first one is called slope-intercept form, which we've already talked about. Oops. 
oops, and that's y equals mx plus b. So that's an easy one to remember. You've, you've dealt with this quite often. The second one is called point-slope form. Point-slope form. Now let's go back to slope-intercept form. Whenever we use slope-intercept form, we go back to the previous lesson, part A, whenever we used it, we, we knew the slope and the y-intercept. Okay? We knew the slope and the y-intercept. So if given the slope and the y-intercept, and you want to write the equation of a line, then use this, then use points, uh, I'm sorry, slope-intercept form, because you determine that right away. Point-slope form looks like this. y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. That's called point-slope form. So in order to use point-slope form, you need to know the slope, you know, and you need, to know, you need to know a point on the line. So to use it, you need to know a point on the line and the slope of the line. You need to know a point of the line and the slope of the line. Once you know the point of the line, that's going to be your, your x1 y1. So that's what you're going to substitute into x1 and y1. So x1, oops, sorry, x1, y1. That's what you're going to substitute. So remember the right equation of a line. If the line rises or the line uh, falls, you need to uh, write an equation, a linear equation in two variables. So, so you're going to have a y and an x. So your point's going to be this, y1 and x1. So x1, y1. Okay? Now, let me just kind of remind you where this point-slope form came from. So remember the slope formula? The slope, remember, was uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And when we used the slope formula, we, we had to know two points on the line. Okay? All right. So, so I'm going to rewrite the slope formula like this now y minus y1 divided by x minus x1. So instead of using y2 and x2, I'm just going to call it yx. So this time I'm assuming I only know one point. Here I knew two points on that, on that line. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now in a previous course, you talked about this idea. Um, x divided by 3 equals 4 fifths. So you solve this linear equation in a previous course. Notice that this is called a proportion. A proportion. And so when solving this proportion, so remember a proportion is where you have a fraction, one fraction equal to one fraction. And to solve a proportion, we can cross multiply. So I get x times 5 is 5x, and then 4 times 3 is 12 and they get x by itself, I divide both sides by 5, and so my solution is 12 fifths. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is because I want you to look at this. This is also called a proportion. I can write this as m1, so you have one fraction equal one fraction. So I can cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I'm going to get 1 times y minus y1. So remember, 1 times anything is, 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 that, is that expression in this case, y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, and that's what this is. So that's where the slope formula came from. Oh, I'm sorry, the point-slope form came from. It came from the slope formula. All right. Now, um, all, to use it, you just plug and chug. You can see how, how easy this is. So, so far, there are two forms you, you need to know. There are three, but uh, we talked about two. Slope-intercept form, and now point-slope point -slope form. In order to use slope-intercept form, you need to know the slope you need to know slope and y-intercept. In order to use point-slope form, you need to know the slope and a point on the line. Any point on the line. Here, it had to be that, that y-intercept. Here could be any point. Okay, and once you know the point, then that goes into x1, y1. x1, y1. All right, so let's see some examples. 
Oh, one other thing. The um, third form, the third form is called, the third form is called standard form. And it looks like this. AX plus BY equals C. So AX plus BY equals C. That's called standard form. So basically what's going to happen is that you're going to bring all the variables to one side, constants to the other, and no fractions. No fractions. So you want these, these coefficients of X and Y and C, X, Y, and C, to be integers. These have to be integers. So X, Y, oops, I'm sorry, A, B, and C have to be integers. So the coefficient of X, coefficient of Y, and C, your constant, have to be integers. So no fractions, that would be standard form. So you can see how, how we're going to work this out. All right, so let's look at this first example. All right, so the direction is going to say something like this. Write an equation of a line. Write an equation of a line. Whose slope is given. And that contains or passes through the point or the given point, the given point. All right, so part A. So right equation of a line whose slope is given and that contains the given point. All right, so suppose our slope is 8 and our point is 7, 6. So there's our ordered pair. Okay, so you're going to find the equation of the line. Now notice that the slope is positive, so the line is going to rise, so you're going to have to have um, a linear equation in two variables. All right, now it's going to say this. It's going to say, write the equation in, and since we just started talking about the three forms, you're going to be asked to write the equation in slope-intercept form and write the equation in standard form. So write the equation in slope-intercept form. And standard form. Standard form. Okay. So it's not, it's not too difficult. Just, just um, practice with this and you should um, be able to... Uh, understand this quickly. Okay, now here's what you're going to do. Since the slope and a point's given, now remember this is not the y intercept, because remember the y intercept, the um, x coordinate is 0, this x coordinate, I'm sorry, the x coordinate is 0, this x coordinate is not 0. All right, so you're given the slope and you're given a point. Since I'm given the slope and a point, remember in order to and if you're given the slope and a point, given the slope and a point, you're going to use point slope form. So what you're going to do in that first step is you're going to plug these values into point slope form. So you're going to substitute into point slope form. All right, and so in point slope form, remember the form is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So this is your x1, this is your y1. So that's what you plug into. You don't plug into xy because you want your answer to be in the uh, variables xy. So you substitute into the given point x1, y1. So it's just plug and chug. So I get y minus 6 that's your y1 equals a slope times x minus 7. y minus 6 equals a slope times x minus 7. All right, now notice this is point slope form. So we just put this in point slope form. So that's point slope form. y minus 6 equals a slope times x minus 7. That's point slope form. To get it in slope intercept form, to get in slope intercept form, you're going to get y by itself. So you can get in y equals mx plus b. So first of all, we're going to distribute. So remember, this is point slope form right here. That's point slope form. 
All right, now I'm going to distribute. So I get y minus 6 equals 8x minus, and that's uh, 56. 8 times 7 is 56. Then to get y by itself, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Add 6 to both sides. Combine like terms. So I get y equals 8x minus 50. So that is slope intercept form. That's slope intercept form. Okay, so your slope is 8 and your y-intercept is negative 50. All right, now the next one is you want to write it in standard form. So standard form, standard form, just remember, standard form is this. Ax plus by equals c. That's standard form. So basically what's going to happen is this. You want to bring all the variables on one side, constant on the other. That's standard form. And always put the, the uh, term x first. So x is first, y is second. So bring all the all the um, variables to one side, constants to the other. Okay. So what what I'm going to do to write this in standard form is that it, if you look at this, the variables are not on one side. So I'm going to bring the uh, 8x term to the other side. So remember, what we did was we subtracted 8x from both sides. And so let's put the 8x first. Negative 8x will be negative 8x plus y equal Remember that's zero right here, and you get with negative fifty. So that's called and that's called standard form. Okay, that's called standard form. So you have it in the form A, A is negative eight, B, B is one, and C is your constant. Now I want you to notice something. I want you to notice something. Someone else you see how I have the coefficient of, of uh, x being negative, the coefficient of y being positive, and your constant being negative? I want you to notice something. See how when, when I brought the variables to one side, I subtracted 8x from both sides? I'll, I just want you to be, to be aware of this. You could have also done this. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. So you could have said, all right, I'm going to bring the negative 50, I'm sorry, I'm going to bring negative 50 over, that's fine, I can, I can add 50 to both sides, no big deal, I can add 50 to both sides, and so I get um, y plus 50 equal, this is 0, 8x, and then, and then I'm going to bring the y to the other side, so I'm going to subtract, I'm going to subtract um, y from both sides, and I combine like terms, so y subtract y zero, so I get 50 equals 8x minus y. So notice someone else could have said negative 8x plus y equal negative 50, or they could have said 8x minus y equal positive 50. Okay? So um, in my math lab, you could write your, and it's going to ask you in standard form, so you can write your answer like this, or you could write it like this. All right, now you might say, well, how, how are those the same? Well, they're equivalent because you remember one of the properties was the multiplication property of equality. Whatever you multiply one side of the equation by, you do the other. So if I multiplied this side by negative 1, I've got to multiply this side by negative 1. So if I multiply this side by negative 1, negative 8x times negative 1 is a positive 8x. A positive y times a negative 1 is a negative y. And a negative 50 times a negative 1 is a positive 50. Okay, so you're going to notice that when we do the other problems, I'm going to write in standard form, I'm write it both ways, just to show you um, the possible equations you can write in standard form. Okay, so your answer in, in the uh, worksheet or test or my math lab, your answer would be this. So your slope intercept form. You're going to write, you're going to write y equals 8x minus 50. Okay. For standard form, you're going to write one of these. It does not matter which one you write. So you can write negative 8x plus y equals 50, negative 50. Okay. So remember, standard form, though, this one was not that, was not that bad. 
because we didn't have fractions involved, but we are going to have fractions involved in, in a, a couple of problems later on. Uh, but that's standard form. No fractions. Your variables on one side, constantly the other. It does not matter whether the x is negative or positive. It does not matter. As long as, as um, what you have here, the opposites are listed here. The opposite of neg negative 8x, positive 8x. The opposite of a positive y, negative y. And the opposite of a negative 50 is a positive 50. All right, so that's part A. So let's look at part B. I'm sorry, number, uh, letter B. So letter B. So letter B, let's suppose we had this in letter B. Suppose this time our slope is negative 2 and the y-intercept is negative 6, negative 3. I'm sorry, the point is negative 6, negative 3. This is not your y-intercept because in order for this to be the y-intercept, the x-coordinate has to be 0 when it's not 0. Okay, so since the slope and a point is given, I'm going to use point-slope form. y minus y1 equals a slope times x minus x1. I can't use right away, I can't use efficiently the, the slope-intercept form because I don't know the, the uh, intercept, the y-intercept. So this can be your x1, this can be your y1, it's a good idea to label this. Again, don't put this as yx, because you want your variables to be y and x in your equation. So you're going to substitute that into x1, y1. So you just plug and chug. So I get y minus y1, y1's a negative 3. Just write this for right now, we're going to rewrite it in a little while, but write, leave it as y minus a negative 3, because that's, that's what you have. y minus y1 equals the slope, which is negative 2, times x minus a negative 6. All right, now, you need to make things easy on yourself. you got to remember from previous course that whenever you subtract a number, you, you can change it to an addition problem. So when I change this to an addition problem, I get y um, plus, remember, subtract the negative 3 means adding the opposite. So the opposite of a negative 3 is a positive 3. So whenever you have y subtract a negative number, rewrite it as y plus 3. So add the opposite. So when we did this one, and see we didn't we were subtracting a positive number, so we left it as y subtract 6, y minus 6. Here, if you you, you really want to write this as, as one operation. So you don't want to say y subtract negative 3, you want to say y plus 3. If you leave it, if you write leave it as if you write it as y plus 3, your chance of making an error is going to decrease quite a bit. So same thing here, you're going to say x plus 6, not x minus to negative 6. And that's going to help you with the next step. So the next step, remember, remember this is point slope form right here. Point slope. Both of these are point slope form. Both of those are point slope form. So now you want to write it in slope intercept form. The next thing you do is write in slope intercept form. To get slope intercept form, to write in slope intercept form, you got to get y by itself. Before we get y by itself, let's distribute. Let's get rid of the parentheses. So I get y plus 3 equals negative 2x. And then negative 2 times a positive 6, a negative 12. And now to get y by itself, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. And so combine like terms, 3 and negative 3 is 0. So I get y equals negative 2x minus 15. So that's slope-intercept form. That's what you put in the blank, slope-intercept form. Okay. Now to get it in standard form, that's where you bring all the variables to one side, constant to the other. So, to get this in standard form, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. To get it in standard form, I'm going to add 2x to both sides. Negative 2x and 2x is 0. And let's put the term x first. So, it'll be 2x plus y equal negative 15. So, that's standard form. Someone else could have written this. Remember, um, the other possible answer to standard form um, would be, all I'm doing is just multiplying both sides by negative 1. 
2x times a negative 1 is a negative 2x. y times a negative 1 is a negative y. Negative 15 times a negative 1 is a positive 15. So this could also be either of those two answers correct. Okay? All right. So in the blank for slope intercept form, you're going to write y equals negative 2x plus minus 15. So remember, uh, slope intercept form. You're going to say y equals negative 2x minus 15. And then um, standard form, you're going to say one of these. It does not matter which one. 2x plus y equals negative 15. All right. So that's part B. Part C. Suppose we had m equals 7 thirds. And... Let's suppose your point is 9, negative 2. So your slope is negative, I'm sorry, your slope is 7 thirds, and your point is 9, negative 2. So again, you're given the slope and a point. This is not the y-intercept. This is just a point of the line. So this is your x1, your y1. You're going to plug into the point-slope formula. So y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So I get y minus a negative 2 equals the slope, 7 thirds, times x minus 9. And remember, you want to rewrite the subtract the negative 2 as y plus 2. So just rewrite this. It makes things a lot easier for you. So I'm just writing everything else. All right, now here's where we're at. In the previous two lessons, on um, previous two examples, excuse me, we had the slope was an integer. So it was just an integer, negative 2, positive 8. Here, though, the slope is not an integer. The slope is a rational number. It's not an integer, though. Okay? So I get this. Now, what you may want to do is... Let's use this one. What you may want to do is, is remember, the next idea is to get the, to get the answer in slope-intercept form. Okay, so, so you can distribute first, all right, or you can multiply both sides by 3. It does not matter how you approach this. What I'm going to do, just to make things easier on us, since we have access to a calculator, is I'm going to distribute. So I get y plus 2 equals 7 thirds times x is 7 thirds x minus... All right, now let's think about this. This is 7 thirds times 9. 7 thirds, 7 thirds times 9. So 7 thirds times 9, I can multiply first and then, re and then uh, reduce if possible. Or I can reduce first if possible and then multiply. So I'm going to go ahead and just reduce first. 3 to 3 is 1. 3 to 9 is 3. So 7 times 3 is 21. So this becomes 21. Alright, so 7 thirds times x is 7 thirds x. 7 thirds times a negative 9 is a negative 21. 7 thirds times 9 is 21. And then all you do now is add 2 to both sides. I'm sorry, subtract 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. And then I get y equals 7 thirds x minus 23. And so that's your slope intercept form. Slope intercept form. So your slope is 7 thirds. This has to be 7 thirds because that's what this was. But this time we see that the, the y intercepts a negative 23. Okay, now to get it in in standard form, to get this in standard form, here's what you're going to do. So remember, you got to bring all the variables one side, constants to the other. Okay? All variables one side, constants to the other. No fractions. This time I have a fraction, you see? The previous two, I didn't have any fractions. This time I have a fraction. So what I'm going to do next is this. So listen carefully. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. So I'm going to clear the fractions. So remember, your, your LCD is 7. That's a 1, that's a 3, and that's a 1. So your least common denominator is 3. I, I said 7, I meant 3. Your least common denominator is 3. So you can multiply both sides by 3. So you had a um, on the previous two tests, you had to solve equations where you had to use the LCD. So I get 3y, 3 times y is, is 3y, equals, I'm going to multiply this by 3, it looks something like this, and then I'm going to distribute the, the 3. 
So I get 3y equals, okay, so remember, 3 times 7 thirds. The whole point of, of multiplying by the LCD is, is to get this to be a 1 right here. And so that means that 3 into 3 is 1, 3 into 3 is 1, so 1 times 7 is 7. So 3 times 7 thirds x is just 7x. Minus, but don't forget you got to say 3 times 23 as well. 3 times 23 is 69. So you have minus 69. And now just bring the variable x to the other side. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I've cleared the fractions. I no longer have any fractions. And let's put the term x first. So I get negative 7x plus 3y equal, this is 0, a negative 69. So that's standard form. There's your standard form. But remember, the other possible answer for standard form is where you just take the opposite of each term. So you could say 7x minus 3y equal 69. So that's the other one. Okay? So either one of these is correct. That's part C. Let's look at part D, uh, letter D. So this time, let's suppose that my slope is negative 1, 6, and the point is negative 10, 0. Negative 10, 0. Now, don't, don't think that this is a y-intercept. So remember, the y-intercept is where the x-coordinate is 0. Here, that's the x-intercept. So you, you, you remember, uh, slope-intercept form, though, that has to be the y-intercept, and it's not. Okay, so, the, so you're going to use a point-slope form still. This is x1. This is y1. So I get the point slope form is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So y minus 0 equals the slope, negative 1, 6, times x minus a negative 10. All right, now don't distribute first because you're going to make an error right here. So you've got to rewrite x subtract negative 10 as x plus 10. So y minus 0 equals negative 1, 6 times x plus 10. Now distribute. So uh, uh, let me just remind you, this is in point-slope form right here. Point-slope form. So all of this is point-slope form. Now we've got to write it in slope-intercept form. So that's where you get y by itself. All right, so let's distribute first. So I get y. Uh, and then y minus 0 is just y. So y equals negative 1, 6x. All right, so let's determine what, what negative 1, 6 times a positive 10 is. So um, let's reduce. So six, uh, 2 into 6 is 3. 2 into 10 is 5. So that becomes negative 5 divided by 3. So minus 5 thirds. So there's your slope-intercept form. Okay, slope intercept form. So, um, uh, so notice this time your, your uh, y intercept is negative 5 thirds. And your slope is negative 1, 6. It has to be what you see here. Okay, so you can always check that part to make sure it's correct. All right, now let's talk about standard form. So, standard form is where you bring all variables to one side and no fractions. Okay, so notice that this standard, this slope intercept form has fractions in it. So, to write it in standard form, we got to clear the fraction, so let's do that first. So I'm going to just go ahead and rewrite this over. y equals negative 1, 6, x minus 5 thirds. So the LCD here is 6. So the smallest number that y over 1, so 1, 6, and 3 go into is 6. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6. So 6 times y equals 6 times negative 1, 6, x minus 5 thirds. So remember, we multiply on both sides. So remember, when we talked about solving equations using the LCD, we, we had to enclose this side in parentheses since it was more than one term. Now I'm going to distribute. So remember, the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to clear these denominators, to make these denominators 1s instead of 6 and 3. So 6 times 1 over 6. I know it's negative, but just leave it as 1 over 6 right now. Reduce. I get 1. So this becomes, so 6 times negative 1 over 6x is going to be negative 1x, or just negative x. Minus, all right, now let's talk about 6 times uh, negative 5 thirds. So it'll be a negative 
So 6 times 5 thirds, so that's 6 over 1. 3 to 3 is 1, 3 to 6 is 2, so I get 2 times 5 is 10. So that's minus 10. So now I've cleared the fraction, so now it's easy to get this in standard form. So let's add x to both sides. And so my answer then is x plus 6y equals, this is 0, negative 10. So that's your standard form. Standard form. You could have also written it as negative x minus 6y equals a positive 10. Either one of those is fine. It does not matter which one. Okay, all right, so that's letter D. So let's look at letter E. So you should become a little bit uh, more confident with, with um, um, writing equations of the lines using point-slope form, then putting it in slope-intercept form, and then putting it in standard form, even when there are fractions involved. All right, letter E, suppose we had, this time the slope is one-fourth, and the point on the line is negative eight, negative one. So the slope is one-fourth, and the point on the line is negative eight, negative one. So again, um, I'm going to use, I'm going to have to use point-slope form. So here's your x1, here's your y1. So I get the slope, oops, so I get y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So I get y, so plug in back in, I get y minus a negative one equals the slope, which is one-fourth, times x minus a negative eight. Okay, now again, rewrite, rewrite y minus a negative one is y plus one. You need to do that. Equals one-fourth, and again, rewrite this as x plus eight. All right, so now remember, this is point-slope form. Point-slope form. All these are point-slope forms. Now, we want to write it, though, in slope-intercept form, so I could get y by itself. Before I get y by itself, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 1 fourth. So I get y plus 1 equals 1 fourth x, and then 1 fourth times 8. So let's reduce. 4 into 4 is 1, 4 into 8 is 2, so I get 1 times 2 is 2. So remember the whole, oh, okay, so that's 2. So I get plus 2. And now, remember, I said I get the slope-intercept form, so slope-intercept form is where you get y by itself. So I'm gonna, since I'm adding 1, I'm going to do the opposite, which is to subtract 1, and I combine like terms. I get y equals 1 fourth x plus a positive 2 and a negative 1 is a positive 1. So there's your slope-intercept form. Okay, slope-intercept form. So notice your slope is 1 fourth, which is what you wanted and the y-intercept's a positive 1. Okay, now let's change this back and let's rewrite now in standard form. So standard form is where you bring all the variables on one side, constants on the other. No fractions. So notice I have a fraction though. So the LCD is going to be 4. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. I'm going to write, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. Uh, I should have left some room here. Okay, so times 4, times 4. All right, so I get 4y equal, and then distributing. 4 times a fourth is 1. 1 times x is x. 4 times 1 is 4. So notice I clear the fractions. Now all i got to do is bring the variables to one side. So let's subtract x from both sides. I need to combine my terms. And let's put the term x first. So that's negative x plus 4y equal 4. So there's your standard form. Okay, you could have also written it as positive x minus 4y, just taking the opposites, which is what's happening is you're multiplying both sides by negative 1, um, equal a negative 4. So either one of those is fine, so you put either this one or this one. Alright, so that was letter E. Let's look at letter F. We'll do a couple more, and so that should get you ready for um, the worksheet or my math lab and the test. Okay, this time the slope is a um, negative 3 fifths, 
and the point on the line is 15, 3. All right, so you write the equation in slope form, slope intercept form, and point and, and uh, standard form. So since since I know the slope and the y and, and a point, I'm going to use point slope form first. So here's your x1, here's your y1. So y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, and all you do is just plug and chug. So I get y minus y1 is three equals the slope, which is negative three fifths times x minus 15. All right, so that's point slope form. Now you want to write it in slope intercept form. So first of all, we're going to distribute. That's where you're going to get y by itself. So you're going to distribute. So you get y minus 3 equals negative 3 fifths times x. And then a negative times a negative is a positive. So let's figure out what 3 fifths times 15 is, though. So 5 into 5 is 1. 5 into 15 is 3. So I get 3 times 3 is 9. So it becomes plus 9. Now adding 3 to both sides to get y by itself, I then get y equals negative 3 fifths x. 9 and 3 is 12. So there's your slope intercept form. So the slope is negative 3 fifths. It had to be negative 3 fifths. And your y intercept is 12. So that's slope intercept form. All right. Now we got to put in standard form. So remember, standard form is where you bring all the constants on one side. I'm sorry, all the variables on one side, constants on the other. So here I do have fractions. So I've got to clear the fractions. The LCD is 5. So let's see is 5. So I'm multiply, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. So I'm going to say times 5, times 5. And then you're going to distribute. So you get 5y equal, so um, a positive times negative would be a negative. So, but, but I'm going to get 5 times um, negative 3 fits. So remember, the whole purpose of using the LCD is to get this denominator here to be a 1. So you've got to reduce. So 5 and 5 is 1. 5 and 5 is 1. 1 times negative 3 is a negative 3. So 5 times a negative 3 fits x is just a negative 3x. And then 5 times 12 is 60. So plus 60. And then all you do now is get the, the uh, 3, negative 3x three to the other side. So you're going to add 3x to both sides. And so I get uh, and let's put the x term first, so 3x plus 5y equal, this is 0, and 0 plus 60 is 60. So there's your standard form. Someone else could have written it as this, it does not matter. So you could have said negative 3x minus 5y equals a negative 60. Because with, uh, remember, basically all you're doing is just multiplying both sides by negative 1. So which basically you're, you're taking the opposite. So the opposite of 3x, negative 3x. Opposite of 5y, negative 5y. Opposite of 60, negative 60. So either one of those is fine for your standard form. You can write this one, or you can write this one in as the answer. It does not matter. All right, so it's letter F. Letter G. Suppose we have the slope this time is negative 3 halves, and the point is negative 5, 4. So again, um, you're going to first of all put this in point slope form since you know the slope and a point. So point slope form. So x1, y1. So point slope form is this y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So just going to plug and chug now. So y minus y1, y1 is 4. So that becomes y minus 4 equals the slope negative 3 halves times x minus a negative 5 though. Okay? Now, since, since you have this um, uh, x minus negative 5, we write it as x plus 5. So y minus 4 equals negative 3 halves times x plus 5. All right, now that's point slope form. Point slope form. All these are point slope forms right here, those two. Okay, so now what you want to do is put it in slope intercept form, though. That's what you want, slope intercept form and standard form. So to put it in slope intercept form standard form, you first of all had to put it in point slope form. 
Okay, so to get in slope intercept form, we can get y by itself. So let's distribute first. So I get y minus 4 equals negative 3 halves times x is a negative 3 halves x. And then a negative times a positive is a negative. So we have 3 halves times 5 over 1, though. 3 halves times 5 over 1. You can't reduce, so just say 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 1 is 2. So I get minus 15 halves. That's what I have. And then to get y by itself, you're going to add 4 to both sides. And so I get 0 here. So I get y equals negative 3 halves x. All right, now let's, let's uh, you've had this before when you solve the equations. Just use your calculator on this since the, um, since, uh, the denominators are the same. Just use your calculator. So you're going to say negative 15 halves, negative 15 divided by 2, plus 4, press equal. And so some of you already know that uh, this is negative 3 and 5 tenths, which is negative 3 and a half, and then you change it. Look, this is negative 3 and a half. And then you just change it to an improper fraction. So 2 times six, um, two times 3 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, so this becomes negative 7 halves. If you didn't know that, then you use your calculator. So remember how we did this. You press second, and then that's pure because you want to change it from um, decimal to fraction. Right here, F to D, D to F. But you got to press your second and PRB button. And then press equal, and you get negative 3 and 1 half, which is what we saw here. And then all you got to do now is just change it to an improper fraction. All right, so this becomes minus 7 halves. All right, now that is slope intercept form. Slope intercept form. So for so form. Now what we want to do now is get it in standard form. So standard form is where you have all the variables on one side, constant the other, no fractions. Here I have fractions, so I gotta clear them. So I'm gonna rewrite this over. Y equals negative three halves x minus seven halves. And let's find the LCD. So the LCD is two. That's easy to see. And then we're gonna multiply both sides by two. So two times y equals two times this side. I can put that in parentheses, since that's more than one term. And then distribute. Distribute the 2. So I get 2y equals. All right, so remember the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to make these denominators here ones. So 2 times negative 3 halves. 2 into 2 is 1. 2 into 2 is 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So 2 times negative 3 halves x, though, is a negative 3x. And then 2 times a negative 7 halves, 2 to 2 is 1, 2 to 2 is 1, 1 times negative 7 is a negative 7. So 2 times negative 7 halves is a negative 7. And then all you got to do now is, is bring the variables to one side, so you clear your fractions, so you're going to add 3x to both sides. And so 3x plus 2y equal, this is 0, 0 subtract 7 to negative 7. So that's your standard form. Okay, that's your standard form. And then um, the other way to write it is just change the sign. So it'll be negative 3x minus 2y equal a positive 7. So either one of those is fine. All right, G, so it's letter G. All right, one more. Let's just look at H. Suppose this time our slope is 0. Our slope is 0. And the point on the line is negative 6, 4, let's say. All right, slope is 0, negative 6, 4. All right, so you, 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 you see that, that the slope is 0, the point on the line is given, so you use point-slope form. No big deal. Point slope form, y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So this is x1, this is y1. So just plug and chug, so I get y minus 4 equals the slope, which is 0, times x minus a negative 6. All right, so then you'd say, all right, so I need to make this plus right here. So it becomes y minus 4 equals 0 times x plus 6. And then you got say, well, I'm, now I'm going to distribute. But just remember, though, 0 times any factor is 0. So that's just 0 right here. So this becomes y minus 4 equals 0. 
and then to get it in slope unit, so, so let me just remind you, this is point slope form, right here. So now I'm going to write it in slope intercept form. So to get slope intercept form, you get y by itself. So to get y by itself, you're going to add 4 to both sides. So y equals 4. So that is slope intercept form. Now you may say, well, where's the m x? Well, m is 0. So you could have, if you wanted to, have written like this, y equals 0 x plus 4. But remember, that's 0 times x is 0. So this is how we prefer to write it. All right, so slope intercept form. Now, I want you to remind, remember you about something. So if the slope is 0, that's a horizontal line, remember? And a horizontal line has what variable in it? It's just a variable y. So, it's where, so in this case, it would be y equal wherever the, the y coordinate is, because that's where the graph crosses the y axis at 4. All right, so that should help you with that part of the lesson. So there are quite a few problems here. It was kind of detailed, um, but there are a lot of things involved in writing equations of lines. And you need to be familiar with this when you get into college algebra, because in college algebra, um, you're going to write equations of the lines again, um, but you, they're going to assume that, that you've already dealt with this. Okay, so that was part B. So that takes care of that lesson.